Hello all. Today we will see about periodontal pocket, one of the important topics in periodontics for exam and also practical wise. So what is a periodontal pocket by definition? It is a pathologically deepened gingival sulcus. You all know gingival sulcus. Ideally, 0 mm should be the probing depth for a tooth, but in, it is impossible to achieve clinically as gingiva is in a constant state of inflammation. You almost get 1 to 2 mm when you probe a healthy gingiva, but 2 to 3 mm is permissible. When the probing depth is greater than 4 mm, we call it as a pocket. For example, the pathologically dependent gingival sulcus can be either due to the coronal movement of the gingival margin or apical movement of the gingival margin. As you could see here, the junctional epithelium is in the same position whereas the gingival margin has moved coronally and here you could see junctional epithelium has also migrated along with the apical movement of the gingival margin or it could be due to both combined. As you could see here, the gingiva has also moved coronally and the junctional epithelium has also migrated apically. So, when the coronal movement of the gingival margin is the reason for the periodontal pocket, it is called a gingival pocket rather than a periodontal pocket because it is formed by gingival enlargement without destruction of the underlying periodontal tissues. As you could see here, the PDL and the alveolar bone is healthy whereas the gingiva has grown in, uh, has enlarged. So, the gingival enlargement is the cause for the increased uh, probing measurement. Whereas here, there is apical migration of gingival margin along with destruction of the supporting periodontal tissues. As you could see here, there is evident bone loss and, and PDL loss leading to the loosening and the exfoliation of teeth. So here, the term periodontal pocket would be appropriate. And when you consider periodontal pocket, it could be either a suprabony pocket or an infrabony pocket. What is the difference between these two? Let us see the both the cases in the same example drawing here. This is a suprabony pocket and this is an infrabony pocket. So what is both? The suprabony pocket is also known as supracrystal or supraalveolar. As you could see here, the bottom of the pocket is coronal to the underlying bone. The pocket is coronal to the underlying bone and the pattern of destruction is usually horizontal whereas in infrabony pocket the sub it's also known as subcrystal or intraalveolar because the bottom of the pocket is apical to the level of the adjacent alveolar bone and also the destruction of the bone is vertical or angular as you could see here it is not horizontal what are the clinical features of periodontal pocket? Before knowing the clinical features, you should remember that the only reliable method to know whether there is a periodontal pocket or not is careful probing of the gingival margin along the tooth surface. Along with this, along with the probing depth measurement, you could also look out for the bluish, red or thickened gingival margin, gingival bleeding or suppuration, tooth mobility, diastema, pain which could be either localized and deep pain. These features help in differentiating between no, uh, normally deep sulcus or a shallow pocket. When the features are present, it could not be a normal sulcus anymore. And let us move to the pathogenesis of a periodontal pocket. To begin with, it starts with the inflammation of the gingiva due to bacterial challenge. No oral cavity is sterile and the gingiva is constantly fighting a battle with the bacteria. When these bacteria, predominantly uh, uh, spirochetes and motel, motel rods, that is the domination of these bacteria will result in the host reacting too much to this. Like the host immunoinflammatory response uh, to this persistent bacterial attack will result in the destruction of collagen and bone destruction. The microbiome, that is the oral microbiome, can also be helpful and it could also be a symbiotic uh, relationship. But whereas the spirochetes and motel rods are not at all symbiotic and will definitely induce the host's immunoinflammatory response to uh, leading to the destruction of the host's alveolar bone and the PDL, the production of cytokines, neutrophils role and monocytes, the production of collagenase and matrix metalloproteinase will eventually lead to the alveolar bone destruction and PDL destruction. 
eventually the junctional epithelium tries to avoid this attack it tries to go away from the bacterial challenge if plaque is present here it tries to move away from it therefore the migration of je that is the junctional epithelium is what results in the periodontal pocket for the migration of junctional epithelium you need require healthy and viable cells the necrosis of the junctional epithelium is not at all uh, possible when pocket is present. The cells are somewhat healthy for uh, migration of the JE to happen. When necrosis happens, that is what you see in ANUG, that is necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. The attack is so overwhelming that the gingiva goes into necros necrosis. But here, the host is fighting back the bacterial attack such that it is moving away from the bacteria, forming a pocket. But eventually, the pocket formation is not at all healthy and it is not uh, useful to the teeth in any part. The transformation of the gingival sulcus to the periodontal pocket, as you could see here, creates an area where plaque removal becomes impossible. The plaque which once which once starts forming in the pocket, it is not removable by uh, manually by the patient and needs professional help while removing these uh, plaque depositing areas. That is what we do in root planing. And uh, eventually, this reason, that is the plaque which cannot be moved by the patient, uh, this forms the rationale behind pocket elimination or pocket reduction procedures. Why do we want to eliminate pocket or reduce pockets? Because we have to eliminate areas of plaque accumulation. So that is the basis of why we should treat a periodontal pocket and uh, hope you are all interested. If you want to know more about pocket, what are the contents of pocket and what is the histopathology of pocket, let us see in part 2. Uh, please uh, let us know in the comment section that you are interested. So we will post the second video soon. Thank you.